welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, I had just initiated discussion on uh, chemistry of group 14 elements. In my last lecture, I started looking into the hydrates of group 14 elements. Let me continue from where I had stopped. Methane having formula CH4 is a odorless flammable gas and it is the simplest hydrocarbon and it is found in large natural underground deposits from which it is extracted as natural gas and used as domestic and industrial fuel. Uh, how that happens? Essentially we burn methane So, in this one if you look into combustion enthalpy that is equal to 882 kilojoules per mole. So, this indicates the exothermic nature of this reaction. Apart from this combustion reaction, methane is not very reactive. It is not hydrolyzed by water and reacts with halogens only when exposed to ultraviolet radiation involving radical mechanism. For example, if you take uh, CH4 gas and pass Cl2 gas under photochemical conditions or under ultraviolet radi radiation, it gives CH3Cl with the formation of HCl. So, the alkanes up to butane for example, methane, ethane, propane, butane all are gases and in fact, butane has boiling point of uh, 0 0.5 degrees centigrade are essentially gases those containing from 5 to 17 carbon atoms are liquid starting from pentane to 17 carbon atoms in a chain and the heavier hydrocarbons are essentially solids. Okay. Silane in contrast SiH4 is formed when SiCl4 tetrachlorosilane or tetrafluorosilane reacts with lithium aluminum hydride and is a source of pure silicon for semiconductor applications. Silane having the composition again H2N plus 2 with straight or branched chains are known for 1. So, that means okay, and up to 10 silicon atoms in a chain are known similar to decane and compares the boiling points of the first 5 straight chain silanes with their hydrocarbon analogs and silanes are explosively inflammable in air. If we heat SiH4, it gives Si plus 2H2. Okay. Or if we take SiH4 and if you pass oxygen gas, so SiH4 reacts with oxygen to form SiO2 and formation of water will be there along with SiO2. Uh, you can see uh, the comparison of boiling points of uh, 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 silanes as well as uh, hydrocarbons and it increases with increase in the number of uh, atoms in the chain okay. and same thing is true in case of silanes as well. And how to prepare silane? As I mentioned, silane can be prepared starting from tetrachlorosilane or tetrafluorosilane. One can also start from uh, silica or silicon dioxide. Uh, in that case, you need high pressure of hydrogen in a molten salt mixture of sodium chloride and aluminum chloride. For example, one can use SiO2, it is solid, treat with high pressure of H2 okay, using a salt mixture of 
sodium chloride and aluminum chloride. So, this gives So, one can prepare this way. However, the general methods of preparation involves using chlorosilanes. For example, SiCl4 on treatment with lithium aluminum hydride. This lithium aluminum hydride is widely used to make uh, element to hydrogen bond in case of P block elements. Or for example, one can take phenyl trichlorosilane, treat with lithium aluminum hydride. One can also write like this. This is how one can make the silanes or organosilane compounds. The silanes are much more reactive than alkanes and their stability decreases with increasing chain length. Silane itself, for example, SiH4 is spontaneously flammable in air, reacts violently with halogens and is hydrolyzed on contact with water, very sensitive to moisture. So, bonds between silicon and hydrogen are not readily hydrolyzed in neutral water, but the reaction is very rapid in strong acid or in the presence of trace amount of base. Similarly, alcoholysis is accelerated by a catalytic amount of alkoxide. For example, uh, SiH4 when it is treated with 4 equivalents of an alcohol on heating. In presence of a small amount of alkoxide, okay. so reaction gives alkoxy derivatives. So, kinetic studies indicate that the reaction proceeds through a structure in which war attacks the silicon atom while H2 is being formed via a kind of HH hydrogen bond between hydratic and protic H atoms. That means essentially it is very similar to concentrated elimination process that we come across in the hydrogenation reactions using transfer metal complexes. Uh, silicon analog of hydroboration is called hydrosililation. So, the addition of SiH across multiple bonds of alkenes and alkynes uh, is what hydrosililation means. This reaction is carried out at high temperature uh, approximately around 300 degree centigrade under or one can carry out the same hydrosililation reaction under photochemical conditions. In both industry and laboratory synthesis, uh, radical pathways are essentially followed. In practice, it is usually performed under far milder conditions provided a metal complex is used as a catalyst. For example, let us consider a typical olefin such as ethylene. Okay. When it is treated with SiH4 in presence of a catalyst such as platinic acid. And in isopropanol as a solvent, it gives. Okay. So, this is essentially a hydrosililation reaction, addition across double bond. Silane 
is a colorless gas which is insoluble in water. It can rapidly react with alkalis and form compounds of this type. Let me write here. For example, it is when it is treated with KOH plus H2O, it can give K2SiO3 plus 4H2. On the other hand, reaction of silane with alkali metals such as uh, potassium in ether it gives it forms a compound of this type a general reaction I am writing Me3EH3 when it is treated with KCl in presence of Me3ECL I, I will define what is E can be either silicon, germanium or tin here also same thing it initially it gives this salt and this one on further treatment with methyl iodide forms MeSiH3 plus Ki. So, that means uh, one can use uh, conveniently this method uh, to generate different types of uh, alkyl silanes or alkyl germane or alkyl stannins. And SiH3Cl is a very useful reagent. I will show you some reactions of SiH3Cl chlorosilane. For example, SiH3Cl when is simply heated, it gives SiH2Cl2 plus SiH4. If it is treated with sodium, so then one can get Si2H6 very similar this compound is similar to ethane. If we take this one and treat with one equivalent of sodium, we get half equivalent of Si2H6. If it is treated with ammonia, uh, it leads to the formation of SiH3 three times. Okay. And if it is treated with uh, water vapor, it gives if it is treated with uh, fluorinating agents such as SBF3, it forms a fluorinated compound fluorosilane. Or as I mentioned earlier, if it is treated with potassium in ether such as diglyme, it forms yes. these are some of the important reactions of chlorosilane. And here we come across two important compounds here. Let us look into the properties of these two compounds here. Let me write here the structure of these two compounds. So, if you just look into it here, uh, please notice this one, this angle is 120 degree and then this distance is N to silicon distance is 173 picometer and here oxygen to silicon bond is little stronger, it is 163 picometer and whereas this one is 144 degree. So, what does it indicate? It indicates 
the geometry around nitrogen is not trigonal pyramidal as expected in case of uh, amines like ammonia. Ammonia is trigonal pyramidal whereas in case it is uh, 120 that means it indicates it does not have free lone pairs occupying one of the tetrahedral positions to give a, a tetrahedral or pyramidal trigonal pyramidal shape. But here if it indicates it is planar obviously one can think that the lone pairs on nitrogen is delocalized over silicon atoms. How that happens? Whereas in this case oxygen is tetrahedral and uh, the angle is 144. Uh, so, NSI 3 skeleton okay, is planar and the NSI bond distance is 173 picometer. Uh, so, if you just look into some books, uh, they mention about uh, the planarity using uh, n pi d pi interaction. That means, silicon atom has 3D orbitals, vacant 3D orbitals that are available for interaction with the 2P orbital in which we have a lone pair on nitrogen. So, that means, they, uh, they talk about P pi d pi interaction and here this interaction they refer this way if it is the uh, p orbital on uh, uh, nitrogen okay, and then we have something like this silicon is there. So, silicon one of the d orbital it overlaps. So, that is leading to the formation of a multiple bond and this is where the lone pair of nitrogen is consumed. This is what some book says, but this is not true. Uh, okay. So, the correct uh, the explanation for this one is the lone pair of uh, nitrogen is essentially given to the empty sigma star of SiH3. Okay. This is very similar to what we come across in case of uh, uh, carbon monoxide or phosphine metal complexes. In case of uh, carbon monoxide or metal carbonyls, uh, the metal T2G electrons are given to pi star of carbonyls through back bonding whereas in case of phosphines this electrons from T2G orbitals are promoted to sigma star of PR3 in the form of back bonding. So, essentially if you just analyze this kind of electron transfer it is very similar to uh, P pi to sigma star in case of uh, R d pi to sigma star. Okay. So, this is in contrast to what we come across in case of uh, organic compounds where we come across uh, the sigma to pi star this we call it as uh, conjugation hyper conjugation whereas here it is opposite. So, it, this is called negative hyper conjugation. So, essentially the electrons lone pair of electrons from the nitrogen are donated to the sigma star of silicon uh, hydrate that means sigma star of SiH3 and this is called negative hyper conjugation. And of course, this negative hyper conjugation is quite common in case of phosphorus nitrogen compounds where nitrogen lone pair is essentially going to the phosphorus sigma star and that also denoted as negative hyper conjugation and essentially strictly speaking uh, the 3D orbits of silicon are very high in energy and they are not participating any in any multiple bond formation between N and Si. So, because of this one the nitrogen lone pairs are consumed and it is a very weak Lewis base compared to ammonia. This, this compound here okay, this is a very weak Lewis base compared to ammonia because its lone pair is now consumed it is not available for performing it as a ligand. Let us now look into hydrates of germane, stannane and plumbane. Uh, germane is GeH4, stannane is SnH4, they can be synthesized by the reaction of appropriate tetrachloride with lithium aluminum hydride in tetrahydrofuran solution or in a typical ether solution. Plumbane PBH4 has been synthesized in trace amounts by the protolysis of a magnesium lead alloy 
but it is extremely unstable. And the stability of the tetrahydrates varies in order that means SiH4 uh, is more stable uh, and then, then GeH4 this if you consider apart from CH4, CH4 is stable let us not bring CH4 here and if you compare the stability of hydrates of uh, remaining 4 elements of group 14 they follow this order the more stable then germanium H4 then so stability decreases down the group okay. and uh, the general method of preparation of uh, germane or germanium tetrahydrate is starting from germanium oxide when germanium oxide is treated with lithium aluminum hydride it gives germane plus LiAlO2 okay. Uh, the presence of alkyl or aryl group uh, stabilizes the hydrates of all the three elements. For example, trimethyl plombane. Okay, so H. So this is uh, much more stable compared to PbH4 and decomposes at minus 30 degree centigrade. Okay but it can survive for several hours at room temperature and if you consider germanes essentially they have the same uh, formula okay uh, it can also form straight as well as branched chain isomers uh, here it is known up to uh, 9 germanium atoms in a chain here okay and uh, germanium tetrahydrate is less reactive than SiH4. It is a colorless gas with boiling point 184 Kelvin and it decomposes 488 Kelvin and also this is insoluble in water. So, reactions between germane uh, tetrahydrate or germane uh, and alkali metals also give similar to the what I had described with silicon. So, they also form something like this with alkali metals. And GE9H20 uh, is known for germanium. In case of tin, only SN2H6 is known, and uh, yes, SN3 analog is not known for tin. This is also very unstable. So, let us look into a simple uh, question here. Mm. If we consider a germanium 5 analog, Germa pentane. Okay. So, how many isomers of uh, germa pentane are possible? It is very similar to uh, our organic compound pentane. So, one can write here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is the one, and of course, here we have 3 hydrogen atoms. So, this is one isomer. Another isomer can be written like this and another can be written like this. Okay. So, so, essentially 3 isomers are possible. Similarly, if you take pentane, one can write 3 isomers. And now, let us look into the alkyl state of some of the group 14 elements in the following compounds. For example, COF2 is there and SNCl3 minus is there and PB6 OH minus 8 4 plus and pH 2 PB PB pH 2. Okay. So, let us look into it here of course, carbon is in plus 4 state and tin in this one is in plus 2 state and here uh, 4 plus charge is there so lead this is in plus 2 state and in this one uh, if any 
bond is there between two atoms. So, this one is a covalent bond. So, we should not consider this one towards oxygen state. So, here for ok this is this one ok. So, this one ok. So, Pb pH 3 triphenyl uh, lead dimer ok. So, in this case the oxygen state of lead is plus 3 because this one is not considered ok. Yeah. Similarly, one can write the possible isomers for a silane of this uh, composition you can call hexasilane. So, in this one also one can start writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is one isomer and then this is another isomer. So, this is one more isomer 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so totally you have 5 possible isomers for hexosilane. Okay. So, very similar to uh, the situation in case of hexane organic molecule. Okay. So, with this let us move on to the uh, oxides of group 14 elements. Uh, the oxides of carbon being gases are quite different from those of the other group 14 elements. It is very interesting and to analyze the oxides of all group 14 elements, the structural differences results from the presence of strong p pi p pi bonding between carbon and oxygen and carbon oxide oxides if we take are discrete species whereas in case of silicon this is exactly opposite. Uh, silic Con does not form SiO double bond okay, and it is unstable with respect to two SiO single bonds. And so, silicon oxides and many oxyanions have infinite covalent network structures of SiO bonds and heating the element in oxygen forms dioxide that is SiO2. Okay. So, unlike the uh, heavier elements, okay, carbon forms very stable monomeric oxides such as CO and also CO2. So, analysis between CO2 and SiO2 can be made in the light of the thermochemical data. So, CO bond enthalpy uh, is more than twice remember I repeat again CO bond enthalpy is more than twice that for the CO bond while the SiO double bond enthalpy term is less than twice that of the SiO bond. And here uh, one can make carbon monoxide in the laboratory by treating formic acid with concentrated sulfuric acid. This is the safest way of preparing in small quantities of carbon monoxide for some uh, carbonylation reaction or making some organometallic compounds containing carbon monoxide. And essentially here water whatever is that is coming out will be taken by H2SO4 and uh, pure CO comes again it can be passed through some drying agents to get uh, CO free from moisture and that can be used in organometallic synthesis. Okay. And if you just look into the CO it is isoelectronic with N2 and has similar physical properties and carbon monoxide is a colorless gas formed when carbon burns in restricted supply of oxygen. If more supply of oxygen is there carbon dioxide is formed in the restricted supply of oxygen uh, CO is formed small scale preparations uh, essentially are preferably made using the method I have shown here by treating methanoic acid or formic acid with concentrated sulfuric acid. You can take uh, formic acid in a round bottom flask and add concentrated sulfuric acid or you take concentrated sulfuric acid in a round bottom flask and formic acid in a dropping funnel and if you add drop oil the gas comes and if the round bottom flask has a side tube uh, you can take that one through drying agent and take it to the reaction for further utilization of carbon monoxide. So, let me stop here in my next lecture I will be giving more details on the oxides of group 14 elements. Thank you very much.